So uh, my, na my name is Francis. So uh, I work in a company called Datarama. And uh, my company does uh, uh, <laughs> compliance. Uh, we provide a platform for compliance uh, partners to like uh, check the uh, invest like investment if it's legit. So we use uh, the ma the major technology we use is uh, Neo4j, which is a graph database. So um, actually, um, I just came to Singapore like last year. So before I came to Singapore, I was working in to uh, Tokyo as a front end uh, engineer. So that's where I kind of made, uh, use React majority like uh, majority of my time. So uh, today I'm gonna talk about React Fiber. So I'm not really going to talk about React 16 because uh, this is like kind of more interest, like the most interesting part of it. So like, is anyone of you kind of like have already read a lot about React Fiber before? <laughs> okay. Uh, so so uh, wait, wait. Oh, so let me do a. So I've tried to do more like a metaphoric uh, presentation. So like let's say in a hawker center and you're queuing for chicken rice. So basically like one to 10, the auntie and or uncle would just take the uh, order by like, like this, something like, a, like one, if they order one, if they order one and like order two or order three, and the fourth person would be ordering like 10 of it. And the fifth person would be ordering one of it. So it will look like a staircase in a way of how the queue is being digested by the uncles. So like for performance wise, it's very like in a, in a stack shape. So like if you get a very like a big order that it will kind of stuck in the queue that people behind that like big order will have to wait quite a long time in order to get the chicken rice. So the new system of queuing, the same, like we still got 10, but the uncle will just prepare the order. And the auntie, like sometimes like when you go to a hawker center, there will be an auntie to kind of like take the order prior to like quite a long time ago. Like before you actually reach to the first in the queue, they will take your order. So that auntie would be like, telling the uncle to like, okay, prepare rice first, prepare chicken first. So basically splitting the task and also like taking higher priorities work like a special order as in, I don't know, the, the ones that would take like ages to prepare. And after the uncle finished a unit of work, let's say the unit of work would be defined by like one chicken rice. Then auntie will tell him like how much time is left and then assign him with the next to-do list so in this analogy, the auntie would be React Fiber, and the uncle would be the main thread. Yeah. So what React Fiber is about, so React is kind of in two phase. The first part is uh, reconciliation, and the second part is rendering. So no matter uh, what reconciliation uh, method is using, how React Native, React, uh, DOM web is actually using its rendering part. So the engine to compile the tree is actually the same, which is uh, wh which where we refer to as a virtual DOM before. And this is how where fiber is for, uh, lies in for React 16. Uh, so, <laughs> Actually, I'm not connecting to you today. So stack, stack reconciler was the reconciliation method engine that uh, React used before uh, version 16. So what it would do, it would just have a very deep uh, call stack. So basically, uh, the main thread will have to finish everything in the tree before it can do like other stuff. So for if you are doing a lot of like intensive intensive update to a UI, you might actually be experiencing similar things like as in like you're in, like inputting something in an input box and then you're trying to update some animation, which like you might see in the very famous example of the triangle, like when they're trying to like spread over the triangle and then change the number as well. So it, you get the very laggy updates. And fiber is the new thing, which, uh, if it starts with a capital F, 
it means a fiber engine. If it's like a lower letter fiber, it means a unit of work within like when, when you read the code. Uh, basically, it's not trying to, it's not trying to be like faster, but in a way it's like making your experience of like user experience, like user interface smoother. And the new stuff is, it got a priority update and corporate cooperative scheduling and incremental rendering and reuse work. So back to the analogy of like, as in a, a store in Hawker Center. So priority updates would be uh, if, if in the queue there is something that is super urgent to do, let's say like someone is trying to save his life by eating chicken rice, then that would come, that would come like forward in the queue in, in this analogy. And cooperative scheduling as in, right now as React is like, you see the cost stack as in like very like staircase-like, and that's referred as uh, synchronous scheduling. So what uh, cooperative scheduling is like, there will be a sync, a sync scheduling. And incremental rendering is sort of a, a subset of like how they implement the cooperative scheduling. And also you can reuse the work. So one of the major thing is like for lower priority stuff, uh, this fiber can stop the low priority stuff in order to do urgent stuff. So that like, let's say if I was uh, updating uh, like a diff with a new title, that would, be considered as a low priority work. So that like, let's say if I get a super urgent work and the engine will have, the main thread will have to stop whatever it was doing and then update the uh, intensive thing. So it doesn't mean that the diff that I was updating was like the word is already gone. It's not, it's trying like React will try to reuse it so that like it won't kind of like redo the stuff that it's already doing. So, this is how uh, the async scheduling works. So basically there's two, uh, three main functions that will carry on. Uh, the first phase is begin work and complete work. And the first, uh, the first phase would be in unit of a fiber. So it would be like one fiber was in, like would begin work and complete work. But after, it doesn't mean that like after you finish the work, it's automatically is immediately committed. So like it's like it's finishing one like let's say three fiber and then commit once. But how does it actually like schedule that I'm gonna do three jobs, three number one? So the first day, the first the first phase is interruptible. So as in like you have. Uh, urgent, like more urgent work can kind of jump into the queue so that the lower priority work can kind of pause. And how it, so let's say, because the ultimate point is trying to make the rendering more smoother. So let's say 60 frames per second. So around like 10-ish millisecond as in one, one, uh, one duration for, for the React, for the engine to kind of come back to the main thread, to the main thread to come back to React to ask like, what can I do? So like, how does it actually happen? It's like it will just utilize request idle callback for like lower priority stuff and request animation frame to call the more like important stuff, as in like animation stuff. And so, so the basic, the basically, you have a current fiber, so it will try to. How, how it kind of schedule is uh, the, the order of how things work is, first it will look for its child. And after the child like, okay, I work done, then it will go, it, it, will, copy, it will get a tag to the, as you see the blue tag over there. It will tag to the new work in, work in progress fiber tree to like let, to let the if uh, the to to get this in the commit come to get this in the event list for the upcoming commit, and then after that, so the return the return function is like how when it kind of clones the the tag to the work in fiber work in progress fiber, and then 
it will go to its sibling. So if, it, if, if there's a sibling, as in like you have one, like H1, and then after that it will be like a, an order list, then the order list would be its siblings, and it will do the same thing. So after that, it will compile, like it will merge back to the effect list. Ultimately, you will get a giant like effect list with the updates that you're trying to do in this time frame. So yeah, and after that, the current fiber will become the old fiber, and the work in progress fiber will become the current one. So they just kind of switch the point so that like you you get a like caching fiber effect. So the main point is like let's say if you have uh, 15 milliseconds, and like f for example the first work you've used like three milli three milliseconds, so you got like seven milliseconds left. So the, what it will do is like it will call request idle callback and to see like what can I do next. So whenever it calls that, it, it will tell the main thread like uh, how much time I left, which is the idle deadline, which comes with the function as a time remaining to actually remind the main thread. Yeah, so actually from uh, version 16.0, it's by priority. So maybe you have seen it before that like the priority would take its no work, synchronous priority, task priority, like high, low, off screen. So like no work is the highest. And the begin work function will take priority level as a param when it tried to begin the work. But then if you check in uh, version 16.1 plus, it no longer becomes the priority level it actually becomes a expir expiration time. So the earlier the expiration time, the higher the priority. So for the same function of begin work, it will take the render expiration time as uh, what the priority level was doing. So like, as you can see, I think they're still changing the API, uh, even though like Fiber is officially released. And so we kind of, like, if you want to kind of keep an eye on it, then you have to kind of, like, download or, like, pull when it's updated. Uh, sorry. So, like, I was going to, I was going to show you the, um, there's one. So like if you can go like if you're interested in knowing how this like thing works in as in like a super step by step thing you can go to this website which is built by some like awesome people but which I don't know. So so you can see like let's say the first time step is like after begin on road this one now. So it says like it needs no low priority work. And this, the child of this guy is a diff, which needs low priority work, as in the event is a placement. So what it does is it will go to the, uh, the child to do the work, and then tag it as a event with a placement. And then it will go back, return, and then it will try to uh, commit the work if the time is already like, finished. So the next one, it will go, just go to the root number one, and then again, do the same thing. And then you can kind of turn, it, turn on and turn off stuff to see the alternate, alternate like the, the pointer that I was referring as in, like after fiber is done, then the pointer will actually like switch and, re and return. So this is actually quite a, quite a good uh, website, I feel. And so go back to the commit phase, which is, this phase is non-interruptible. So you cannot really do stuff like uh, when I'm committing, like I have this urgent job, then like I must jump kill, you cannot. So what this, what this stage will be mainly be doing is that it will trigger the life cycles that would eventually uh, be called when, uh, when the components update. So the, 
The life cycle side will be triggered as only component date mount, component date update, and component will amount. So it means that like for the stuff like component will receive props, they were actually called in the first phase. So let's say if you're updating a low priority uh, component and then you're utilizing the functions of the life cycles of component will uh, receive props, it might get called like a lot of times, even though the work hasn't been done for this version. Because like, ultimately, this is where the work are being committed. The first phase is the life cycle. The life cycles can be called multiple times because the low priority works can be like interrupted, and like they can resume afterwards. So that like, so so that like for version for React Fiber, the I feel this would be the most uh, influential part that people will have to change it eventually if async scheduling is by default the the engine. Yeah, so how, how does or did or will it affect us? So generally, like, nothing at the moment. Because uh, for version 16, by default, async uh, scheduling is turned off. So everything is in uh, sync, sync scheduling, which is the same as in uh, previous version. So let's say in version 17, if async scheduling is turned on by default, the existing apps, will the logic will have to change, like might have to change if you utilize heavily on the uh, life cycles that are in the first phase, which including a lot of like will will update that kind of stuff. And yeah, so if you're interested in like reading more about fiber, so I found there's quite a lot of uh, good website that like kind of look into fiber and in some of it are in like a very cold drilling uh, style and some of it is more like an overview. And I personally really recommend this one. The, so this is a presentation in a React 17 that this lady made a cartoon introduction into Fiber, which is very good if you haven't really like, read about Fiber at the first place, which is a very good introduction to it. Yeah, so that's it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. So, uh, if you're interested in working with uh, React or like graph, uh, graph database, like uh, me and my colleague are here, like my, my colleague's son is here. Like if you're interested, then like kind of can talk to us as in <laughs> if you're trying to, yeah.